Be sure to watch to the end of this video for an important update on the future of Flat Ride of the Week. The history of the Matterhorn stretches all the way back to the development of the first amusement rides in the early 1800s. Back then, very few amusement rides existed and the entire industry was made up of individual showmen making their own rides, often based off of popular rides owned by other showmen. In this era, a popular ride design began to emerge known as the Roundabout. The Roundabout was a round ride with some form of rotating platform where riders were seated. These rides were originally powered by horses or children in exchange for free rides. Later they began to be powered by steam engines. With the increased power and speed provided by steam engines, these rides were split into two different classes of rides around the 1860s. The first design was slower and usually featured horse-like ride vehicles. This eventually evolved into the modern carousel. The second design was faster and would eventually become the ride we now call a Matterhorn. The Proto Matterhorn evolved in the late 1800s with the addition of hills to the ride track, making for a more extreme ride. One of the first known rides to feature this design was called Switchback and debuted in 1888. Early Switchback rides were also some of the first rides to ever feature music, utilizing a band organ in the center of the ride, establishing a tradition that still follows modern Matterhorns. In the 1920s, a new take on the ride began to be popularized, named the Caterpillar. This ride featured smaller but more numerous rider vehicles that were seated directly behind each other. Unlike a modern Matterhorn, these rides also featured a curtain that would be raised over the riders at certain points on the ride to make the ride more exciting. A few of these rides can still be found operating today, such as Caterpillar at Folly Farm in the UK. Around the mid-1920s, this ride type split once again. One version of the ride would retain the static ride vehicles with an emphasis on lateral forces. These rides would eventually add more hills and become the modern Himalaya ride. The other version of these rides would add swinging cars and would emphasize speed and rapid swinging forces. The first of these rides would be called Moon Rocket. Introduced in the early 1930s, these would be some of the most intense rides of the interwar years. Moon Rocket rides were able to rotate at 16 revolutions per minute, with the center dome of the ride able to rotate at the same speed in the opposite direction, making for an increased sense of speed. At least one of these rides still exists and can be found at Dingle's Fairground Heritage Center in the UK. After World War II, the development of the Matterhorn rides continued. In 1960, the company HP Jackson of the UK created the Strato Cruiser. This ride featured a new mounting system for rider vehicles that allowed them to swing out more easily. Many credit this ride for bringing the Matterhorn into the modern era. The original Strato Cruiser would continue to travel and operate through 1983, then it was refurbished into a Himalaya ride and continued to operate until 2003. The ride is now in storage with showman Joey Wilson and it is unlikely to ever reopen. Though the Strato Cruiser is now gone, the rides it went on to inspire remain a staple of nearly every amusement park and fairground. A good modern Matterhorn is known for its powerful swinging motion, high speeds, lights, and banging soundtracks. All of these concepts were introduced slowly over 100 years. Now modern Matterhorns rest on a legacy of amusement ride history. With this history understood, let's talk about the current generation of Matterhorns. The design of the Strato Cruiser drew a lot of attention from U.S. ride manufacturers. In the mid-1960s, Alan Herschel introduced the Flying Bobs. Chance Rides would shortly after buy the rights to this ride in the 1970s. The Flying Bobs featured steeper hills than the Strato Cruiser and used smaller two-person rider vehicles. The Flying Bobs became extremely popular in the United States, and most Matterhorns found here are Chance Flying Bobs. No Herschel Flying Bobs are known to still be operating. Sometime in the 1990s, Chance changed the design of the Flying Bobs from a closed off design of the rider capsule to a more open one. Recently, Chance did unfortunately discontinue the model, though hundreds remain operating. One great example is the Flying Bobs at Fun Spot Kissimmee. This ride was originally a traveling model. It features a great sound system and appears to have the ability for operators to control the cycle. Sadly, this ride is being removed in the next few months and being replaced by a new Matterhorn from Bertizan. 
There's also a Matterhorn owned by Kissel Entertainment that travels all over the southeastern U.S. and is known for its strobe lights, amazing sound system, train horn, fog, and high speeds. This is an example of the Flying Bobs with a newer, more open seating design that debuted in the 1990s. Unlike most American rides, the Chance Flying Bobs are considerably more intense than some of their European counterparts, though this largely depends on how they're operated. I have found that the Chance Flying Bobs are easier to rock back and forth than most Matterhorns, making for a very intense ride cycle if you're willing to work for it. The Flying Bobs at Fun Spot Kissimmee is truly an amazing ride, and I will talk more about it at the end of this video. As mentioned before, hundreds of other Chance Flying Bobs exist, and if you ever find one, I highly recommend giving it a ride. Reversham brought the Matterhorn out of the Dark Ages for Europe. They made their first Matterhorn around 1975 and their last in 1990. They sadly do not make Matterhorns anymore. Their model of the Matterhorn came to be one of the most successful Matterhorn models out there, with about 40 units being sold around the world. Reversham has different designs for the Matterhorn gondolas, two of them being really similar to their bumper car designs the Atlanta and the Privilege. There are still Reversham Matterhorns traveling all around Europe. I could however only find two operating units in the Western Hemisphere, one in Brazil and one in Argentina. The Reversham Matterhorns all differ from each other having different angles and steepness of the hills. However, this is minimal and can most of the times not be seen visually. They are also manually operated most of the time, so that can also play a big role in the ride experience. Mock Ride started making Matterhorns in the early 1970s. These were styled much like the Chance Flying Bobs, however they featured far more lights and decorations than their American counterparts. One of the most well known of these rides is Matterhorn at Cedar Point, which I have been on several times. And I honestly always thought it was kinda lame. Unlike a Chance Flying Bobs, it does seem to run pretty slow, and in talking to friends who have ridden other Mack Matterhorns, this does not seem like just a Cedar Point problem. The cars are also much harder to swing than the Chance version, and in general, I'm not too big a fan of the Mack version of the Matterhorn. The defunct manufacturer from Belgium, Subima, also made a lot of Matterhorns from the 1980s till the mid-1990s. These rides can often be recognized for the lack of a large tent cover over the front half of the ride. However, some of them were originally built with a complete roof, like usual, but most of them don't have it anymore. So Bima had two types of gondolas, a old original sled gondola design and a newer gondola design which looked pretty similar to the privileged version of Riversham's gondolas. So Bima's Matterhorns were popular mainly in Belgium, the Netherlands, France, and the UK. These countries still have a handful of Sobima Matterhorns traveling. I have been on two Sobimas, which are also very different from each other for the same reason as the Reversham ones. Uh, the Sobima ones can have insane swings, they can also go almost upside down, like the Reversham ones. It also just depends on how it's operated, like Reversham ones. They're mainly operated manually. Bertizan of Italy is the largest ride manufacturer still making Matterhorns today. They offer a 16-seat and a 20-seat Matterhorn, both with quite over-the-top theming. The rides come in several theming options, but the most popular are the Rock and Roll and the Ice Jet themes. These rides can be found traveling and in parks all around the world. As mentioned before, one is coming to Fun Spot Kissimmee later this year, and I'm excited to see how it compares with the late but great Flying Bobs. Now these are just a few of the most notable Matterhorn manufacturers. Several other manufacturers have made Matterhorns though, such as Heinz Fotz, SDC, Preston and Barbary, and many, many more. Now both me and Alex have been on an assortment of Matterhorn rides, and rather than talking about the general ride experience of all of these rides, we both decided we would talk about our best rides ever on each of these Matterhorns. So I'll go first. Now my favorite ride experience on a Matterhorn is the Fun Spot Kissimmee one. Uh, so that is a Chance Flying Bobs, an older Flying Bobs from the 70s um, that is currently at Fun Spot Kissimmee. It's over by the go-karts. Uh, it's probably not going to be there for much longer. It is being it actually recently sold on a used ride site. So like I said before, it does have an amazing soundtrack. Um, it plays great music. It's got pretty good speaker system. 
um, and the ride operator appears to have some kind of control over the cycle. Normally you run for probably a minute and a half forward, minute and a half backwards at pretty high speeds, uh, but we actually were just lapping at one time, me and a couple friends, um, and they noticed we were lapping it, so they just let it keep running and running for probably six or seven minutes, or we you're just going crazy. Um, and again, as mentioned before, with these chance ones, you can really easily rock them back and forth. Um, all you have to do is kind of throw your weight from side to side. Um, it's very exhausting to do, but man is it rewarding because we were getting these things, because we were all doing it, swinging up against the stops on the, the uh, uh, swing stops that are up on the part of the sweep arms that connect to the ride vehicles. So we got this swing all the way up and hitting those consistently like every time we would get flung out. It was absolutely wild. And then we went in reverse. <laughs> so it was just crazy. Um, it's absolutely such a social ride to ride with friends and just try and see how high you can get it to swing. So I absolutely love the Chance Flying Bobs, and I do look forward to riding more Matterhorns here in the future. I do plan to ride the Kissel-owned Flying Bobs uh, this summer, and hopefully that ride lives up to the hype. It lo certainly looks amazing. So, yep. Let's go ahead to Alex now, who's ridden a lot of Matterhorns over in Europe, um, and see what his favorite Matterhorn ride is. So in total, I have experienced seven Matterhorns, with my favorite one being the French Shakers. Uh, which was built by Reversham. Uh, to me, this ride is pretty much perfect. It gives an excellent long cycle, always like six minutes or something. It goes both backwards and forwards in one cycle. It has a great speed, great variation. They speed up the machine, they slow it down, they speed it up. That's the way you should operate a Matterhorn because you get the best swings when you speed up and slow down, it's really, really great. And the way it's operated, it makes the gauntlets almost swing upside down. It's insane. You don't even have to do any effort to make them swing. It just goes by all by itself. It's excellent. Um, the atmosphere on the ride is always great as well. Good music. Good people, good vibes, the operator speaks a lot through the mic. Every time I see this machine, I ride it a lot, I look at it, I'm in love with it. It's just such a beautiful ride, such an amazing ride to experience. I love it. Then also I've been on some Subima ones, which I also had a lot of pleasure riding. Um, for example, last winter, I rode one which comes very close to me, like 40 minutes. This one uh, was a little bit harder to make the gauntlet swing, but with some effort you can actually make it flip almost upside down to its maximum angle. And I've had quite a lot of fun doing that. Lots of people who were standing next to the ride were like looking at me and like, what is he doing? Because you could perfectly see my gauntlet swinging a lot higher than the others. So that was pretty funny too. I really enjoyed that Matterhorn. And yeah, just in general, I love doing Matterhorns. They are always very variating from each other. You'll never get the same experience twice. And it's, it's a really fun ride to do. Now that is about everything we have on Matterhorns. Um, there is a lot of history out there on these rides. However, going much deeper than we did in this video would have made this video hours long. So I encourage you to go ride your local Matterhorn and discover all you can about that ride's history. You may find some interesting stories that really make your next visit to a park or fair very special. As we close out this video, I just wanted to thank all of you for making Flat Ride of the Week such a successful series. Though we have no long-term plans for ending this series, this episode will be the last scheduled episode of Flat Ride of the Week for some time. As many of you know, I work as a supervisor at Cedar Point, and this means that once the season starts, I have no free time to make these episodes. That being said, me and Alex have lots of ideas for future Flat Ride of the Week. For example, you can expect a lot more parts of episodes shot on location, much like the Looping Starship episode. I will also be spending my summer supervising an Early Monster, Zamperla Skater Coaster, Larson Flying Scooter, and a Fun Time Slingshot so you can expect me to revisit these rides on Flat Ride of the Week in the future. I really do appreciate Flat Ride of the Week because if you would have told me two years ago before we started this series that at two years from now I would be supervising Flat Rides for a season, I would have been sad. But now I look into it and I'm excited for this season more than just as much, if not more than, I would be for a coaster. 
I would like to thank Brennan for letting me join this series, for letting me um, narrate all this stuff, because I know for myself I'm not the best narrator at all. English is not my first language, you probably heard it too. And yeah, I just really would like to thank Brennan for letting me do this for over two years right now. Thank you for everything and also thank you for watching. And yeah, uh, I'm really looking forward to the future Flat Red of the Weeks. And yeah, I wish you a lot of luck, Brennan, in Cedar Point supervising. Thank you very much, Alex. I wish you the best of luck at Plops of Land this summer as well. And with all that being said, Alex and I have really enjoyed Flat Ride of the Week Season 2, and we both look forward to seeing all of you next time. Bye-bye.